Here we go, y'all. Back with another video on Forescan. Today's video, we're gonna cover the F-150. Um, and it's gonna be pretty much an update video because a lot has changed um, in the last two years with Forescan. So we will cover the differences between then and now um, with Forescan, specifically needing a spreadsheet and in inputting your own values manually versus how it's very automated now. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so first off, what do you need to use for scan? You definitely need a OBD2 to USB adapter. Um, this guy is the ELM327. Um, and I have a high speed, medium speed switch on it. Makes it a little easier. Do you need this? No, the software now has a way to work around that. Um, but it's way easier if you have one of these. If you're gonna buy one, buy one with a switch anyway. Um, you used to have to do some research and uh, go on Amazon and just kind of figure out which one you needed. Um, now, they say it for scan right in the title, so you can't really mess it up. But mine, ELM327, that's what I'm using. Next, you need a laptop. You need to be able to download the software. You need to be accepted into the Forescan community as far as being registered. Um, and then after that, you can download a temporary license. Temporary license. It's a two-month license. Now, doesn't mean you just get two months to do it. It means... When that expires in two months, you just download another license. That's all you do. You just keep doing that. You don't have to purchase the membership or anything like that. If you do, I suppose it goes back into the um, Forescan research and development to try and make this as automated as it can. Um, and then obviously you need a vehicle that it's going to work on. So got to be a Ford. Uh, so with that being said, I did not mention spreadsheet. No. Two years ago, yes, you needed a spreadsheet. But on these popular vehicles like this F-150 here, they've done all the work for you, and I'm gonna show you that. Next, Forescan changes settings in your modules. This will not write anything to your ECU. You can't take off your speed limiter, your rev limiter, none of that. So don't have the idea that this is gonna do this for you. This is a simple settings change, and that's it. Um, so, and we're gonna look at all those settings here. So let's get this guy connected first. So here we go. Find your OBD2 port. Mine is right there. So, plug this guy in and I believe it always starts off in high speed. So plug that guy in there. And then the other end in your laptop. Say you're new to this and you're watching this first video. I've got a ton of videos um, out there. If you need help downloading and starting this program, I've got a video for that. Um, if you need help finding a spreadsheet, even though you might not need it nowadays, um, I've got a video for that. But I'm assuming you already watched that. So here we go. We are going to not open up print <laughs> okay we are going to open up the Forescan software and hopefully my two months isn't expired all right so now we're coming in here and we want to go down to the bottom here and click connect to vehicle now Ignition key must be on, uh, the switch must be in high speed, and the vehicle not moving. So, I will start the vehicle. The switch is in high speed already. Click OK. And then it takes a minute here because it checks what kind of adapter you have first. 
Um, I'm not sure why it's not defaulting. But anyway, first it's going to check for a, a Bluetooth adapter. Now it's checking for a Wi-Fi adapter. Now it's checking the COM ports. So we'll be in business here in a minute. There it goes. So this is my file that I've already saved. So we'll click yes. And then this is new. The vehicle may contain medium speed modules. Does your ELM adapter have high speed medium switch? Yes, mine does. If yours does not, click no. So now it's asking me to switch it to medium speed. So I will switch it, medium speed, click OK. And then it reads the medium speed modules. Now it's ready. You see down in the corner here, it says it's ready. Now you go up here to this little configuration and programming. It's the uh, microchip here. Click on that. Back in the day, all of these as built were the only way that you could change your settings. So if you had something in the APIM that you wanted to change, you would come in here and click on the as built, come down and click the play button, and then it says switch it back into high speed. So we switch the speed, switch back to high speed. Um, and then it gives you a warning. I click OK. Uh, right now, the truck is on. It's reading some low volts. You, this can be an issue. Um, so, you know, it's best to have like a charger connected to your battery if you come up with this. Um, some vehicles are not going to have an issue. So I'm going to connect anyway. So here are all the values that I'm telling you about. So your spreadsheet would tell you what values to insert where for what outcome you want. So if you wanted your daytime running lamps to be your parking lights, then you would input a certain value. If you wanted them to be your headlights and your parking lights and your fog lights, you would insert a different value. So we don't need to do that though. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna click stop. And then we're going to go back to the, up here, instead of the log, you wanna to go to configuration and programming. Now, you can just go to this APIM right here, module configuration, the not as built. Click play, gives you your warning about sync three, because the APIM is your radio. I'm gonna continue anyway. Now, see, these are all your options you have now. So ambient lighting, I have ambient lighting in this truck, it's enabled. Um, if you don't have ambient lighting, I don't know why you'd want to enable it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so base, mid, treble scope, brand Ford. So this is, let's see. Let's find one that we can mess around with here. Oh, if you don't want your Sirius XM, you can come down here and you can disable your Sirius XM travel link. Let's go to splash screen. Let's see what this is all about. Okay, so what this is, is this is your startup screen on your radio. So you can come down here and you can click black label for the Lincoln. Um, presidential, there's Raptor. Non Shelby Mustang. Uh, I mean, you've got all of these Ford GT, and then what that'll do is that will change the actual um, logo on your radio. So right now I have stock splash screen. So, which to be honest with you, I don't even know what one that is. So let's uh, let's mess around. Let's do uh, let's go to Ford Performance. So then we'll click the check mark. Now that that's changed here, you can go in and change some other stuff, but I don't recommend it. I recommend writing each change just in case you have an issue. You can go back and change it. So we'll come down here and we'll click write. So old value stock splash screen, new value Ford Performance. Yes. 
confirm that. And then it will tell you to cycle off your ignition and then back on. So we'll shut the ignition off for a minute. And sometimes in this step, if your change does not take place, you probably just didn't cycle the ignition long enough. So I always give this a good 15 seconds or so. And I'm not counting, so I'm gonna turn it back on. And then I am going to click OK on the computer. And honestly, I didn't even notice a change. So let's uh let's shut the ignition off again. Give it a little longer. Maybe shut the door. And let's check it. I am not seeing a difference. Okay, so we, uh, my, uh, my screen stopped recording. So this really sucks. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna go, that did not, uh, that did not change. So we are going to, I gotta find where I was, okay, right here. So splash screen, the Ford Performance did not change. So um, what it didn't record now is I did the Raptor. So select Raptor, hit OK, and then I hit right, and then it said, you know, are you sure you wanna do this? Cause I already did it. Um, yes. So now this is what that looks like. So I'll shut the ignition off. Raptor. Ford Performance. Sick, huh? That is sick. All right, so I'll turn it back on. There it is again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So that's what you missed. And along with another 15 minutes worth of video that I thought my screen was recording, but it wasn't. So I will try and go through this again. So seat button icons. Check this out. Heated and ventilated seats on my home screen. I have them right there. Uh, I like them there. You know, I just like them there. Personal preference. Um, so those guys are there. Um, so let's get out of the APIM here and then we will go back over to the configuration and programming and then we'll go into the body control module because this is where lots of goodies are and then we'll go through here. So let's, let's, let's go down here and kind of, kind of go through the list here a little bit. Um... Yeah, let's see. So, okay. Daytime running lamps. So, this is a big one with everybody. Huge. I switched mine. This Lariat comes stock with the LED low beams on uh, for daytime running, running lamps. I switched those. So, I switched those to the turn lamp. The reason why I turn uh, chose the turn lamp is because I have the LEDs in the front and they're bright orange. And then what I do is I also add the parking lamps down here so where is it daytime running lamps include parking lamps i enabled that so let me show you on my lariat what that looks like so we'll put the parking brake on Ugh. and then let me shift this bad boy into gear so as you can see in the back parking lamps are on front Trim ring for the parking lamp is on, as well as the grill lights, and then this is my turn signal. Okay, so that's what that looks like, and I think it look, just looks mean, so I love it. That's why I have that. Okay, let's get this beep, beeping noise to stop. All right, so, but here, let's check out some of the options here. Um, daytime running lamp, so 
you can choose low beam, fog lamp, uh, high beam, or turn lamp. Like I said, I like the turn lamp. Dark car. I've had a lot of people comment, hey, I bought a X police, police cruiser, dome light doesn't come on. That's because it's in dark car mode because of um, being a law enforcement vehicle. So here, you can just disable that, and then you're good. A uh, double honk. Oh, man. Double honk on leaving cabin. This is the one that I disabled first because what happens if you start the vehicle and then you have the fob in your pocket, you get out, and when you shut the door, the vehicle honks twice at you saying, hey, dummy, you got the key with you. Um, super annoying. So I definitely disabled that. Oh, what else do we got on here? Um, Bambi mode. If you're not familiar with Bambi mode, Bambi mode is a term for having your high beams and fog lamps on at one time, um, or at the same time. So a lot of people like it. I ran it for a while. It didn't super benefit me because the lights are so good on this truck, so I just disabled them again. But a lot of people, a lot of people um, change that one. Um, and there's, you know, there's just so much stuff that you can look at. I mean, some of it, you know, there's, if you install LEDs in the back turn signals or the front turn signals, you can go in here and you can actually, um, so look right here, um, front, front bulb turn outage, disable it. Then you won't get the hyper flash that everybody complains about, um, so, I mean, it's as simple as that. You can just disable it, and then you're good, and you won't um, have to deal with it anymore. But some stuff is going to be vehicle-specific. Um, like, let's let's find one. Oh, rain sensing. So, rain sensing wipers. If you, like, for instance, I enabled it in my wife's Ford Fusion because it has the sensor in the dash. What it doesn't have is the selector on the um, turn signal stock or the wiper stock to actually turn it to that. So if you can only enable one part of the system and not turn it on in the other part, it's not gonna do you any good, whether you enable it or disable it, it's just not gonna work. So some stuff, you know, it's just, it, it won't work. Perimeter alarm in my Lariat, I've got an alarm up top. Um, you can shut that off if you want to. Um, power deck lid control, just, um, just a lot of PowerPoint. PowerPoint. I, I made a video on this too. PowerPoint feature is enabled because I have um, outlets in here and then my PowerPoint timeout is set for 60 seconds. Um, that's because my dash cam is plugged in and I don't need my dash cam to keep recording the entire time the vehicle's off. I, I don't need it to do that. And my dash cam is set up to where if the power shuts off to it, it turns off. So, that being said, I mean that I mean there's a lot you can just just hook it up, check it out. I mean there's lots of stuff, TPMS. Um yeah. So, now I'm done. So I'm going to hit hit stop here, and then I'm going to go back up to the vehicle, come down here and hit disconnect. Now, that being said, shut off my ignition. I can disconnect my laptop and the OBD2 port. So there you go, guys. I mean, you don't have to input anything now on popular vehicles like this where people have already done the work for you and implemented it into the program, into the software. Um, yes, spreadsheets were a thing of two years ago. Um, some vehicles you probably still will, uh, you know, have to input stuff manually and you'll have to get on the forum and search for a spreadsheet. I got a video on that. I'll, I mean, it's super simple, guys. Um, after you, you know, do your first rodeo, it's, it's simple. So anyway, I'm not going to waste any more of you guys' time. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe it. And definitely, I'll well, subscribe it. No, subscribe to me. Yeah, because, you know, most of you guys out there who want to do this, don't subscribe. Like, it's crazy, the amount. But anyway, neither here nor there. Um, F-154 scan, guys. Super awesome, super awesome. I got other content. Check it out, guys. 
And if you got any questions, if you need me to make another video that I haven't, check out my four scan playlist. But if I haven't made a video and you need to know how to do something that I can show you, put it in the comments. Uh, DM me on Instagram, something. Check it out. Um, yeah. Till we meet again, guys. Later.